What does it mean to be a Muslim? Around the world today, we are seeing fellow brothers and sisters suffering. Take a look at the events in Gaza, a sorrowful sight. Innocent people being killed just for being human. Ibrahim, a fellow revert, could not tolerate the oppression of Muslims around the world, especially in the social media world. So he decided to create his own halal social media company called Dawagram. However, two months into his journey, he was arrested by local officers. Ibrahim now more than ever needs support of the Ummah to keep Dawagram been running. Every small donation helps. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're gonna check out Rabbi Beck, which is an Orthodox Jew, with his stance on Islam. As always, I'm trying to stay as objective as possible here on this channel. I like to believe that I always give everybody an equal footing and everybody a fair chance to express their worldview, no matter if it is Christians, Jews, or Muslims. So therefore, I'm very excited today to hear the Jewish Orthodox perspective on Islam. Guys, before we start the video, as always, take the second, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my work, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Jews have a golden history in the Muslim countries. For centuries. You gotta love that accent, man. Muslim countries. Sorry. Uh, try not to hate it. Much better than in the other countries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we burned the Jews. We live much better in the Muslim. Everybody knows the history. Knows that. Not everybody knows that, yeah. And I must tell you, even today, after 75 years of killing, 75 years of occupation, 75 years of blood, yes, go yes. to any Muslim country, they are welcoming Jews. Any Muslim country, Morocco, Algeria, Tunis, Iraq, Iran, uh, Yemen, everywhere you go, they are welcoming Jews. I myself have was in Morocco. I must tell you, I didn't believe what I saw. I just passing the border from Spain into Morocco. Straight are going to, over the border. Muslim people come to me. Rabbi, please bless my children. I couldn't believe it. After 70 years of bloodshed, what's going on here? What's going on here? They're completely not hatred. How can that be? This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. But this is a fact, what I saw with my eyes, everybody can see that. Jews have a golden history in the Muslim countries. Yes, absolutely. And for this, I want to refer you to the article again. So what did the Muslims do for the Jews? Islam saved Jewry. You can find this article on the Jewish Chronicle. This is the world's oldest Jewish newspaper. So this is not some Muslim propaganda. This comes from Jews. Islam saved Jewry. This is an unpopular, discomforting claim in the modern world. Yes, they're absolutely right here. In the modern world, nobody knows that and everybody thinks that Muslims are terrorists and they hate Jews. But it is a historical truth. The argument for it is double. First, in 570 CE, when the Prophet Muhammad was born, the Jews and Judaism were on the way to oblivion. So first and foremost, it's nice that they recognize Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And second, the coming of Islam saved them, providing a new context in which they not only survived, but flourished, laying foundations for subsequent Jewish cultural prosperity, also in Christendom, through the medieval period, into the modern world. By the 4th century, Christianity had become the dominant religion in the Roman Empire. One aspect of this success was opposition to rival faiths, including Judaism. Along with massive conversion of members of such faiths, sometimes by force, to Christianity. Much of our testimony about Jewish existence in the Roman Empire from this time on consists of accounts of conversions. Great and permanent reductions in numbers through conversion between the 4th and the 7th centuries brought with them a gradual but relentless whittling away of the status, rights, social and economic existence 
and religious and cultural life of Jews all over the Roman Empire. A long series of enactments deprived Jewish people of their rights as citizens, prevented them from fulfilling their religious obligations, and excluded them from the society of their fellows. This went along with a centuries-long military and political struggle with Persia. As a tiny element in the Christian world, the Jews not have been affected much by this broad political issue. Yet it affected them critically, because the Persian Empire at this time included Babylon, now Iraq, at the time home to the world's greatest concentration of Jews. Here also were the greatest centers of Jewish intellectual life, the most important single work of Jewish cultural creativity in over 3000 years apart from the Bible itself, the Talmud, came into being in Babylon. The struggle between Persia and Byzantium in our period led increasingly to a separation between Jews under Byzantine Christian rule and Jews under Persian rule. For people that don't know, the Byzantine Empire was essentially the Greek Roman Empire under Orthodox Christianity. This is my background. Anyways, it continues here and when we scroll down we read, had Islam not come along, the conflict with Persia would have continued. The separation between Western Judaism, that of Christendom, and Babylonian Judaism, that of Mesopotamia, would have intensified. Jewry in the West would have declined to disappearance in many years, and Jewry in the East would have become just another Oriental cult. But this was all prevented by the rise of Islam. The Islamic conquests of the 7th century changed the world, and did so with dramatic wide-ranging and permanent effects for the Jews. Within a century of the death of Muhammad sallallahu in 632, Muslim armies had conquered almost the whole of the world where the Jews lived, from Spain castrates across North Africa and the Middle East as far as the eastern frontier of Iran and beyond. Almost all the Jews in the world were now ruled by Islam. This new situation transformed Jewish existence. Their fortunes changed in legal, demographic, social, religious, political, geographical, economic, linguistic and cultural terms. All for the better. So the article continues, of course, I'm going to link it in the description box below, guys, so you can check it out for yourself. This is the history that Rabbi Beck talks about. However, this history has been suppressed and most people do not know it. The Zionist rhetoric will, of course, talk against this and therefore justifying the existence of Israel. History in the Muslim countries. The problem is not between Islam and Judaism. It can be. The problem is occupation. No difference if they're Jews, if they're Japanese, Chinese, <laughs> Japanese. Black, white, no difference. <laughs> the accent is amazing. The problem is occupation. And I see that many times I come in, in Muslim communities, I speak in many mosques, in many um, universities, by Muslim communities, I'm always welcome. Always. I never see even any hatred from Muslims to Jews. Because there is no problem between Jews and Muslims. We have very good life in the Muslim lands. It's, I must say, I'm shaming myself. Even I'm not considering myself a Zionist. But I know that the Zion is coming from the Jewish origins. I'm shaming myself instead to be so thankful for the Muslim people. For the so good hospitality in all the Muslim countries. What they're doing for the Muslims. They're killing them. They're robbing away the land from them. It's so shameful. It's really shameful. But I hope and I'm sure it will come the day that the state of Israel will come to an end. And it will go back to the Muslim Inshallah. people. And then Jews and Muslims can live together in harmony and peace in Palestine. Yes, and this is very important to understand because the mainstream narrative wants you to believe that you are an anti-Semite and people want the destruction of Israel. They want to kill every Israeli. 
That is, of course, not correct at all. Nobody wants to kill civilians. This is only about the illegitimate government of Israel. Nobody wants destruction. Nobody wants bombing. Nobody wants to expel the Jews. This is simply about a change in government, so everybody in Palestine has equal rights. That's it. And I must say, our rabbis visited many times already the leaders of Fatah and the leaders of Hamas. And the both declare, we have no problem with Jewish loyal citizens. Yeah, as long as exactly. you haven't got aspirations to take over the land, you are welcome here in our, in our land in Palestine. And we know that it's true. We know that it's true. And I saw that in my eyes, that even today's day, a Jewish people going to Morocco, he is welcome there. It's unbelievable. In Iran, there is a beautiful Jewish community of 30,000 Jews. Yeah, Iran starts Christians as well. MP. Sure. Even in Iran, the rate of, uh, of to have an MP is a half of million. But the Jews have their own MP in the parliament. There are Jewish institutes. I myself, I didn't was in Iran, but my father was in or other rabbis, my colleagues was in Iran. They told me, so I have a beautiful Jewish life. There is no hatred for Jews. This is complete false Zionist propaganda. The Muslims want to yep. kill all the Jews. They want yep. to turn all the Jews into the sea. Yep. Or something like that. They're just making a big propaganda to bring in the Jewish people into their agenda. That even you are against Zionism, but if you are not siding with us, you will be killed by the Muslims. They want to kill all the Jews. This is completely untrue. This is why this is so important, events like that, to speak a Jewish rabbi with a Muslim imam together to show this is not the problem of the religion. This is a problem of occupation. All right, this is it for today's video. It's absolutely beautiful to hear it from a Jewish rabbi, of course, to hear it from the different side. This was objective. Objectivity is what we need. Truth is what we need. Facts, statistics, numbers. The Zionist narrative is simply false. Here you can see a graph of the death toll and the injuries over the years from 2008 to 2020. So yes, this is obviously before the current conflict. However, it is very important to see how many deaths and injuries were on the Palestinian side. So nobody can claim this is an unprovoked terrorist attack. So the deaths are in dark blue and the injuries are in red. However, they counted as one number. 2008, you can see we have 3,202 Palestinian casualties. On the other hand, we have 853 Israelis. However, if you zoom into this now, you can see that even though we do not have a number, we do have deaths, of course, on the Palestinian side. However, on the Israeli side, we have no deaths whatsoever. If you go further down, you see 2009, 7,460 incidences. And here you see again the dark blue bar of Palestinian deaths. In comparison, you have 123 injuries on the Israeli side. So when you scroll through here, you can see it is always thousands versus hundreds. And moreover, you see actual deaths on the Palestinian side, of course, and no deaths whatsoever on the Israeli side. And now we come to 2014. 2014, we have almost 20,000 people either injured or killed. On the Israeli side, this time we have a substantial amount of 2,796. This is not even 10% in comparison to the Palestinian side. And moreover, yet again, no deaths whatsoever on the Israeli side. And if this wasn't enough, we fast forward to 2018. And here we see 31,558 Palestinians either injured or killed. And on the other hand, 130 Israelis. So where is the objectivity here, man? Where is the truth? Just look at the numbers the Palestinian people have been massacred for years. You have a few hundred Israelis dying in the conflict. On the other hand, you have thousands and thousands of Palestinians. It's absolutely amazing yet again to see a Jewish person speak out on this. I truly hope, inshallah, that the narrative will turn. 
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين